Hi, everybody, and welcome to another installment of Heal the Shadow in Your Relationships 2. And today I'm so pleased to have with me Michelle Marchant Johnson. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Neola. I'm so happy to be here. Thank oh. you for the invitation. I'm so happy to have you here. So let's tell everybody a little bit about you. Michelle Marchant Johnson is a professional relationship coach, an author, and a speaker. And in her business, Love Life Coaching, she partners with successful, smart, sensational single women around the world who want to find authentic love and affectionate romance. She's known by many as your guide to the right guy. Datingadvice.com has named Michelle one of the top 10 midlife relationship experts. Congratulations for that one, Michelle. Thank you very much. And for her popular advice, for her published articles, and she's also writing a book called Attracting Love from the Inside Out, which is what it's all about. She hosts the annual Ready for the Right Guy Global Telesummit and is the co-creator of the proprietary system for single women called How to Meet a Great Guy. So welcome so much, Michelle. I'm so happy to have you here. Thank you. It's my privilege to be with you, Neola. And I want to start off by asking you to share with us, because you have a fantastic story uh, about uh, your own you know, story and journey to love. So tell us about that. Yes, well, it's quite a saga. I met and married my husband and became an ecstatic first-time bride at age 43. And so, needless to say, it was a bit of a long and winding journey to love. And I used to joke around and say that I was going to write a book called Dating for Decades, kind of <laughs> chronicling all of the uh, adventures that I had out there in the world of dating. And at one point, I thought it might end up being like the Encyclopedia Britannica with multi-volumes, right? <laughs> Basically, I, like many people who do this work, found my way to this work in part because of my own journey. I think that's pretty common. And as a result of my long and winding journey to love, I made a lot of discoveries and found that there were a lot of tools and resources and things that I hadn't been aware of for so many years that really helped move me forward. And really when I turned 40, I kind of came to the realization that while I was very successful in my career and in my job and everything else was going well, for whatever reason, things were just not clicking in the love life department, right? Yeah. And so I thought, you know, obviously there perhaps are some blind spots that I'm not seeing because my plan was obviously not getting me to where I wanted to be. And though I had a great life, I really desired to have that love and partnership and really wanted to experience that as a part of my life. And I just felt like I kept hitting a, a, a wall. And so I went on a very, very deep journey of discovery. And really for a period of a couple of years, I just immersed myself in almost every possible avenue that I could possibly find, spiritual avenues and coaching and counseling and reading books and articles and listening to speakers on all different things. And of course, what began to show up for me, Neola, were some blind spots that I hadn't seen before. So what I came to realize is that I had some self-sabotaging thoughts and behaviors some of which I hadn't even really been conscious of or aware of prior to that. And so as I began to move forward and find and make these discoveries, what amazed me is that once they became evident to me or once I became aware of them, then I'd be able to begin to move forward and to move through them, right? But it wasn't until I had that awareness so that I could move forward. So we're talking today about the shadow. And when I think about the shadow, what I think of, what image comes to my mind is perhaps I'm walking along the sidewalk and I might kind of catch a glimpse out of the corner of my eye of my shadow. And yet I may not always really be fully aware that it's there, right? Mm, absolutely. And so when I think of the shadow, I think of it as something that you know is an extension or a part of me. And I think of it as not something that is to be judged or condemned. 
it's just something that I like to approach from a place of observation and curiosity. So when I began to discover some of these self-sabotaging thoughts and behaviors, which I'm going to talk a little more about in a few minutes, mm -hmm. then I began to, it was almost like putting them out on the table and I could observe them and say, oh, well, isn't that, isn't that interesting that that is there? And then I never really realized that it was there. And yet this was holding me back emotionally. It was holding me back from being fully authentic. It was holding me back from fully opening my heart or being receptive to fully giving and receiving love. Yes. And so one of my very favorite quotes that goes along with this is the quote by Rumi, which I know is, is quoted often, uh, which says, Your task is not to seek for love, but merely to seek for all the barriers within yourself that you have built against it. And that was really the journey that I started on with what I am describing to you. Now, the, to make a, a long story shorter, <laughs> I did, as a result of having some of these breakthroughs and discoveries and beginning to see some of these blind spots that I hadn't seen previously, I was able to make some breakthroughs and meet an amazing man. I've now been married to my husband for eight and a half years. <laughs> Yay! And he's just been a, such a gift and such a blessing. Mm. And out of that has come a most amazing gift. And I'd just like to share this with you and then we'll uh, wrap this piece Absolutely, up. Absolutely, sure. So as you know, Neola, you and I have spoken before. In 2012, I was diagnosed with a very serious case of breast cancer. Mm -hmm. So at that point, my husband and I had only been married for five years. So relatively early still in the marriage. Yeah. And when they told me about the breast cancer, because it was a fairly advanced cancer, they told me really they were going to have to throw everything at it. So I had to go through a lot of chemotherapy, a double mastectomy, radiation. I had to have a hysterectomy. I mean, I really wow. felt like I was being stripped of every bit of my femininity, yes. right? Yeah. So here I am, this woman, bald. My eyelashes and eyelashes had fallen out. I'm losing my breast, I had had a hysterectomy, and here I am feeling the least attractive, the least lovable, the least worthy of affection from someone that I'd ever felt in my life. I mean, I just felt devastated, as well as terrified as to whether I was even going to live. And yet this amazing man gave me such an incredible gift in the midst of that, because he would kiss my bald head and he would tell me I was beautiful. And he would tell me that no matter what, he would be there for me. And even though he couldn't take away the pain or the suffering or all that I had to go through, just having him stand by me through that was such an incredible gift. Mm. And this is the other piece that really came out of that. I got this amazing experience of being loved for the essence of who I am, with all, without all of the trappings that had seemed so incredibly important to me throughout all of my years as a single woman. You know, all those efforts to try to look good and to try to avoid looking bad and to try to look like I had everything all together all the time, thinking that things had to be perfect in order for me to be worthy, to be loved. I got this gift of knowing that this man just loved me just for me, not for how I looked, not for what I could accomplish, not for what I was doing just for me. And that's been just an amazingly moving gift that has come from that experience. Now, not to say that I would wish, wish breast cancer on anyone, but there are gifts in even the most challenging and difficult circumstances. Michelle, I just love that you shared that story. And it's such a beautiful story. And what I'm getting out of it is it's, it's so worth um, getting beyond your shadow to your authentic self, you can be present authentically in a relationship. And when you do that, you know that you're attracting the person who loves the authentic you and not the persona, not the personality construct, not what our ego puts out to the world like you were saying. You know, and, and I know so many women out there can relate to your saga of, you know, I need to be perfect, he needs to be perfect, and, and they're so picky that they're keeping themselves from being able to be authentic to attract that perfect, wonderful, authentic partner. So I so appreciate your story. Thank you so much for that. 
Well, and, thank you for the beautiful recap there. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 you, I, I've read that you say that there are three F words that create blind spots and difficulty moving forward. So tell us about, uh, give us the first one. Yeah, I'd love to share with you the three F words. So as I moved through That's my... That's so cute, by the way. I love that. <laughs> Yes, don't worry, we're not going to get profane here. (laughs) But as I moved through this uh, journey that I described to you of my own, of seeing some of the blind spots or what we might call the shadow in this series, I found that there were three main areas that these turned up in. And I've also, of course, seen this for many of my other clients as well. And so the three F words are fears, fantasies, and falsehoods. So I'll start with fears. So fear is such an incredibly interesting thing to me. What I have found, Neola, in my own life and in the life of my clients is that we seldom make our best or most powerful decisions from a place of fear, right? Yeah, never, never. That's yeah, what I never. say. Yeah, yeah it's, it's when we make our decisions from a place of faith, and even though we can't necessarily see what's out there, that we tend to make our most uh, powerful decisions in life. So what I recognized, even though I was a very confident woman in my career and other aspects in my life, I did have some deep fears which weren't necessarily that apparent to me as I was going through all those years of being single. But as I went on this deep journey, I found that I did have fear of not being lovable or not being good enough exactly how I was Mm -hmm. or not being successful in a relationship or having rejection or having my heart broken. And so without even realizing it, I had built up some pretty significant barriers to protect myself. And the ironic thing is, is that we build these barriers as we go through life and we believe they're protecting us and keeping our hearts safe. And in reality, oftentimes what happens is they actually isolate us from the love and the connection and the authenticity that we so deeply desire to express with someone. So I had some of that going on. And of course, that's something that I see frequently. Uh, Fears show up in so many different ways. It's, you know, we can't even enumerate them all, but we all have our fears. And yet it's so interesting because so often the fears that we make out to be so big in our minds are not nearly as scary, even if they were to actually ultimately come to pass. And right. most, if not many of them, never do, right? That, that's one of the advantages of getting older, is you've been through so much stuff that you were afraid was going to happen. And then you realize, hey, I got through it. I got through it fine. It's not such a big deal. Yeah, yeah. You know, I remember when I started my business, it felt very scary to me because I had done very well in corporate America and had a lot of security there. And I remember thinking, what, I'm going to do this entrepreneurial business now and (laughs) help women on their path to meeting the right guy and attracting love. And I thought, you know, is this really even possible? And that seemed terrifying to me at the time. Now, after having faced breast cancer, I go, oh, that was nothing. Yeah, exactly. But at the time, it seemed really big. And I think that's part of what you're talking about is we gain more experience and we get a sense of our own power and strength. Right. And the fact that we can survive even the things that might seem insurmountable in our minds, then we can begin to have more confidence in the ability to make more of our decisions from that place of faith. Yes, I I so agree with you. And I want to emphasize to the viewers, it's not up to you, your your smaller self, your personality self, your egoic self. You have a greater power within you that is operating through you. And you tap into that whenever you're going through some kind of a a, a tough time. And that's the thing that's going to see you through. So that's why uh, you call it coming from faith instead of fear. We know fear is never the thing to make a good decision from, but when we're not aware of our fears, we make those decisions and then we don't even realize it. So you said faith, you said fear, and then the third one was? Well, so the first one is fear. The second was fantasies. 
Okay. Yeah. Fantasies are things like, you know, when my life is perfect, then I'll be worthy for love. Or mm -hmm. if only I could be this, or if only this potential partner could be this way or that way, or if only the relationship was this way or that way. In other words, we believe something that's not necessarily the reality. We believe that things will be perfect when. And the good news is we don't have to be perfect to be ready and to be worthy for love, right? Right. That's the good news. And because if we did, none of us would ever have it, right? Right. And life just doesn't go, you know, the stars just don't align in perfect order at some moment and make it magically right for us to be in, in a relationship. That's just not in my experience as to how life works. We, we have to prepare to receive. That's right. We have to prepare to receive and then we have to receive the gifts and the experiences and in the people that appear in our lives. Because my experiences as being a single woman for 43 years and having a number of relationships, all of which taught me something and helped lead me to the place where I was really ready and able to receive the love and gift of my now wonderful husband. Um, you know, as I look back on that, at, at times it felt very frustrating and it felt very um, confusing to me as to why some of these relationships didn't work out. And yet, looking back on it, I can see that, you know, in reality, it was they were all, te all of these people and all of these relationships were teaching me things that were really preparing me to be ready to have much more than I'd ever even hoped or dreamed of was really possible for me. Absolutely. Each one of those relationships works on releasing those barriers to love that you were yes. talking about earlier. Absolutely. Yes. And so if you find yourself in the midst of something that seems challenging or confusing, it can be valuable to look at what the gifts are with it, that are inherent within that situation or what you can really learn or gain from your interactions with that person because it very well may be, in fact it's likely that you know that's not by chance that you're having that experience, right? That's right, you attracted it for a reason. <laughs> that's right, that's right. And then just quickly the falsehoods are just basically, these are all very entwined, these three, but sure. the falsehoods are again those false beliefs that you know, I'm not good enough, I'm not lovable, if someone really knew who I was or really knew all of my flaws or imperfections, then, you know, I wouldn't be accepted fully or I wouldn't be loved. Or it can even show up as something like, you know, there's no one out there for me. Sure, love works for someone else, but it doesn't work for me. Or it can show up as, you know, there's not one good woman or man in this town or this state or this country. You've heard this, right? I, I've heard it over and over. <laughs> there's no one here. You don't know what it's like here, right? Uh, yeah, no. And, and, you know, having been married for 17 years, I am so blessed to know that my husband can be there when I'm having my crazy times where I'm not quite myself. And, and he knows it because he fell in love with my essence. Yes. And when he sees me going through something crazy, and sometimes I've even been, you know, very not nice to him, and I hate to admit it, but um, he just knows. He's looking at me going, okay, she's going through something. <laughs> and and yeah. he's just going to be there through it all and, and love me in spite of whatever my flaws and whatever my personality and whatever I didn't handle perfectly well. And so, yeah, it's totally a falsehood that you have to be like so completely perfect and, and know how to handle everything and never slip up and, and all that stuff. So I so appreciate that you pointed those out to us. That's really beautiful. The, the fears, the fantasies and the falsehoods. So what, what kind of advice would you give to somebody who is wanting to move through these challenges? That's, that's where the rubber hits the road. Yeah, and that's a huge topic, and we could uh, have a big conversation around that, but I'd love to at least help in terms of getting started. Mm -hmm. So there is one little exercise which I often do with my clients, just kind of in our initial conversation. So we'll talk a little bit about you know, what ideally they would like to have in terms of a, real loving, a loving relationship, and a little bit about 
you know, uh, kind of the highlights or lowlights of a relationship history. And then I always ask this question, and I ask it repeatedly until they don't come up with anything else, because it's interesting how the first layer of answers are not typically the real answers, right? Right. And so um, what I would invite your listeners to do is to actually take out a piece of paper and to experiment with this themselves. So here's the question. So the question is, what could be slowing you down, standing in the way, or stopping you from having the love that you really desire? Because intuitively you do know some of these things once you really go deep and get into it. So what do I mean by sometimes the first layer doesn't, you know, the real answers don't come out? Well, if you'd have asked me back when I was a single woman, I would have said, well, you know, I'm I'm not moving forward because I've dated every guy in this city. It feels like there's not any good ones left. They're all married, to, you know, or you know, married I'm, to someone I'm else. Too or, yeah, I'm, I'm too, too old. I'm too old. I I had that because my husband and I got together when I was 39. Yeah, or I'm too, you know, I'm too immersed in my career. My career is preventing me. So that would have been kind of my first layer of answers. However, were those the real answers? No, they weren't. And they're not for most people. So the real answers were was that I had fear. I had falsehoods in my mind. I was participating in some self-sabotaging thoughts and behaviors. I had some pretty strong walls built up against myself, thinking that I was protecting myself from disappointment or heartache or rejection. Yes. And so, in some cases, I was even doing the rejecting first before anyone else could get around to it, oh, you know, yes. showed up. In a oh, variety. yes, I've done a bunch of those, too. <laughs> and so sometimes, you know, as I started exploring my own journey and went deeper and deeper, then there were layers of this. And again, what I want to emphasize here, though, is when you get these things out, I really invite you to look at them from a place of observation and curiosity and not from a place of judgment because we know that what we fight against or what we um, or what we try to um, criticize in ourselves tends to persist right right what what we what we resist persists that's exactly the phrase yeah. I was looking for yeah what yeah. we resist persists and so Instead of looking at it as, oh my goodness, I've got all of these things. I, I mean, it is good, in my opinion, to get everything you can out. So to ask yourself that question as many times as you can until you stop coming up with any answers and then even explore to see if there might be another layer because it's usually in those deeper layers where you get more in touch with the truth or more in touch with that shadow that we might not see out of the corner of our eye. And then once there's just incredible power, this is an incredibly powerful first step because once you pretty much get it out there and you can see it, if you don't look at it with judgment but just with, from a place of observation and curiosity, then you almost immediately can begin to have breakthroughs. Just having that awareness mm -hmm. is the very big, most important first step. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't agree with you more. And I, I love that you say, of course, don't resist it. And I always tell people, look at that stuff with love and compassion. Because, you know, you went through some stuff which made you protect yourself and put up those walls. That's and right. so when you release those walls, you got to love what's underneath of it. Because that part of you was in pain when it put that stuff up. So... Yeah, curiosity and observation, all, all really great, great advice. Um, and I understand you have a wonderful free gift for everybody who has come to see you on, on this uh, interview series. Can you tell us about it? And there's a link right here, right below the video. Yes, I'd love to tell you all about it. So this is a series that I developed from my heart. It's called The Seven Attraction Principles to Help You Attract Love at Any Age. And it's, an, it's a mini course, email course, as well as an audio. And I actually go in more depth in talking about the fears, fantasies, and falsehoods in the audio and how you can begin to move forward through your fears, fantasies, and falsehoods. So a little bit more detail and a few more tools than what we had time to share today. Uh, it's a $97 value, and I invite you to 
um, explore this topic a little further with me if it uh, resonates with you. And that's just on my website at lovelifecoaching.com. Awesome. And like I said, we do have the link, link down here below. So thank you so much for that free gift. And I so appreciate having you here, Michelle. You've really opened our hearts with your story and given us a lot of fantastic tips. And of course, before we sign off, I would love to hear uh, any parting words that you would like to leave my viewers with about their journey to creating the love that they desire and healing that shadow. Yes, I appreciate the invitation and I always love to stay in the moment for this and not necessarily have something pre-planned and here's what's coming to me in the moment right now and that is that whatever you have been through, whatever heartbreak, disappointment, whatever mistakes you feel like you may have made, whatever perceived mistakes you feel like you may have made, I invite you to have a deep understanding and compassion for yourself. You deserve your own compassion and love and forgiveness just as much or more than any other person on this planet. And what I find in this journey when we feel like we've strayed from whatever our ideal path was in our minds or we've been stuck in the fears or the fantasies and the falsehoods for a time or we've been in relationships that have been harmful or where we have been deceived or where we've made mistakes by not paying attention to the early red flags it can be incredibly difficult for us to forgive ourselves and sometimes even harder to forgive than those other people that may have hurt us or disappointed us in some way and so what's coming to me right now is just that I loved what you said Neola where you said you know have some compassion for yourself because you've obviously been through experiences or things in your life which have caused you to feel like your best strategy without you know whether it was conscious or unconscious was to try to protect yourself yeah. so I just invite you to have that love and compassion and forgiveness for yourself and to give yourself the freedom to release that so that you really can move forward on your path to love yeah. Oh, I just love that, that you decided to end this this way. That is really a very loving message. And we so appreciate the nurturance that you are giving all of my viewers. And we appreciate who you are, what you do, Michelle. Thank you so much for being with us. My pleasure. Lovely to be with you. All right. And Stay tuned, everybody, for our next installment of Heal the Shadow in Your Relationships too, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.